So this is huge. Starting today, you can fine tune ChatGPT on your own data sets. It's something that people have been waiting for for a while. In this video, we'll see what benefits you can get when you fine tune ChatGPT on your own data set. We will also look at the pricing structure and I'll walk you through a code example of how you can fine tune a model on your own data set. And at the end of the video, we will also explore why it may not be a good option for most of the people. So what exactly do you get with fine tuning? When you fine tune a model, you will get improved stability, which basically means the model will be able to follow instructions better. You will also get reliable output formatting. So basically the model will stick to the output format in which you want the output to be. And with fine tuning, you will be able to customize the tone of the model. A few things that they have highlighted in their blog post. First, when you fine tune a model, you will be able to use shorter prompts to get better performance. Also compared to GPT-3, the GPT-3.5 can handle 4,000 tokens. And from their test, it seems like you can reduce the prompt size by up to 90% by fine tuning instructions into the model itself, thus speeding up the API calls and cutting costs. Now, the beauty is when you combine fine tuning with other approaches such as prompt engineering, information retrieval, and function calling. That's what's make these LLMs a lot more powerful. Next, before looking at a fine tuning example, let's look at the pricing. Now, they have divided the pricing into two different parts. One is the initial training cost, and the second portion is the usage cost. So for training, it's going to cost you $0.008 per 1,000 tokens. Now for input prompts, it's going to cost you $0.012 per 1,000 tokens. And for the output usage, it's going to cost you around $0.016 uh, per 1,000 tokens. So they, at the end, they have provided a very simplified example. For example, if you have a training job that ha that's around 100,000 tokens, that will cost you around $2.4 to train the model. Now we're going to come back to this pricing again at the end of the video because there is a lot to unpack here. Now let's look at how exactly you can do the fine tuning. So in the blog post, they have provided this uh, schema. So first you need to prepare your uh, data set. Uh, and the data set is supposed to have a system message, then input from the user, then response from the assistant. That's how your data set is supposed to look like. Then you can make an API call to OpenAI to upload the files, then create a training job through an API, and then you can reuse the model through an API as well. But we are going to look at a more concrete Python example. So OpenAI has a very nice uh, fine tuning guide on their website. So here they give you the reasons of why you would want to fine tune. For example, a fine tuning will result in higher quality results than prompting, ability to train on more examples than uh, you can fit in a single prompt, and token savings due to shorter prompts, lower latency. Okay? It's a very detailed uh, guide, and I would recommend everybody to go over this if you are really uh, trying to understand fine tuning OpenAI models. But let's say if you want to fine tune the model on your own data set, First, you need to put this, uh, put your data in a proper format. So for that, your data is supposed to have three different fields or roles. So the first one is system message. Uh, then, so that's basically the system message that we are providing to the model. Then the user input. So here we are defining the role as user and the content is the um, input prompt from the user. And then you're going to have response from the assistant, right? So basically, you will arrange all your uh, examples in a simple JSON file. And that JSON file is going to be used by the model for training. Now, once your data is in the proper format, you need to upload the JSON file that you just created to OpenAI API. Now, once you're able to create your data set, the next step is going to be to upload your data set to OpenAI. So for that, we're going to be using the Python code. This is the OpenAI API package. Uh, then you will uh, provide the file name. So let's assume uh, the data is stored within this mydata.json file. 
and then you uh, provide the purpose so in this specific case we want to fine-tune our model now after doing this we need to simply start the fine-tuning job and for that we need to provide our OpenAI API key then you simply make a call to the fine-tune uh, job this will create a job uh, and it will start fine-tuning now you need to provide two uh, additional inputs first is going to be the training file this is basically the model name that's going to be used for the trained model and then you need to provide the name of the base model so if you want to fine-tune gpt 3.5 turbo you need to provide that name in here what happens when you fine-tune the model and you want to use it it's as simple as using the uh, chat completion api uh, from openai so here you simply need to provide uh, the model name that you assign uh, to your fine-tuned model then the system message and then the user input uh, and you will get the assistant response or the model response as output so this is very simple uh, to fine-tune gpt 3.5 using the openai api i'm going to create a more detailed video on how to fine-tune this on your own data set we are going to look at uh, how to structure the data set and then we'll make uh, the api call to get a fine-tuned model so stay tuned for that video now let's look at some not so great things which might deter some people from using this service okay so the first one is the safety feature so your training data is passed through their moderation api and then a gpt4 powered moderation system to detect unsafe training data that conflicts with the safety standards of OpenAI. So basically, you are limited by the standards of data. Now, the second thing to consider is the price itself, because the fine tuned GPT 3.5 Turbo model is a lot more expensive compared to the uh, vanilla GPT 3.5 Turbo model. Uh, just as an example, for input tokens, it's about eight times more expensive compared to if you're using the 4k context window gpt 3.5 turbo model now for the output tokens it's about 5.3 times more expensive compared to the original 3.5 now compared to gpt4 it's still less expensive but probably the performance is not going to be as great as gpt4 so if you're fine-tuning a model you really need to consider this substantial increase in price it's a very interesting development and it will be interesting to see what people can make on top of it although we'll still have to see whether it can actually give a performance boost in your applications or not and is that performance boost worth the substantial increase in price let me know what you think in the comment section below i will be making a more detailed video on how to fine-tune this model on your own data set if you found the content useful, consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.